I've decided to make one more video today before everything in New York besides possibly, I don't know, Dull Nail Clippers is banned by your great comrade Andrew Cuomo when he gives the state of the state tomorrow. Let me tell you people, it's going to be bad. But today we're going to have a little Zippo history lesson. We're going to be talking about the Barcroft. <clears throat> I got this little gem here in an eBay auction. I sniped the hell out of somebody in the last few seconds, and I won this little gem here. So if it was you on eBay bidding for this, congratulations, you got sniped by SpeedDog138. But what is the Barcroft? It's a little strange if you've never seen one before. It's not quite the, like the other Zippo lighters that you may have seen. But it did have an interesting purpose. I've even got my Warm and Zippo Lighters Field Guide, which I reviewed before here, to have a little bit more history brought into uh, play about this. But basically, if you don't remember, there was a time in history where, as hard as it may be to believe, you were actually given a little personal choice. If you wanted to put something into your body, that was your own choice. Like, for example, cigarettes. And in fact, it used to be quite fashionable to uh, smoke cigarettes in, say, the uh, 40s and the 50s. Because it wasn't a demon that caused cancer. God forbid you take a little personal responsibility and don't become a 14-pack-a-day chain smoker. No, you need somebody to tell you what to do. But before that, it used to be fashionable to light up a nice calming smoke in a restaurant and instead of having to ungentlemanly reach into your pocket and pull out your zippo at the restaurant because they had some weird customs back there in the 40s and 50s but hey i'm sure they'd call our customs weird now but instead of doing something ungentlemanly like that you go into a restaurant or a bar and see something like this on the table this is what's referred to as a table lighter because it stays on a table. What they generally have are a heavy base so they don't knock over if somebody bumps up against them, and generally they can hold more fluid. This one can, and I'll tell you why, because it's one of the later models. But a little history lesson about the lighters themselves. They were made, they started being made in about 1938 to 1939. They were That was the first generation of the Barcroft lighter, and that actually had a full-size insert, and it was a little bit taller, so it had an insert about this long. It looked just like the regular insert from today, but it was much longer, and it held much more fuel. Later, they shortened the lighter down to the size that, not the size that it is today, but a little bit shorter. It's not quite the size it is today. They, they shortened it down a little bit shorter, and it still had an insert that was the full size of the thing. So again, hold, held more fluid. And then in 1949, they made a third model. And it also had a large insert, and it too was shorter. The third model is this size right here, but it had a long insert in there. Not all of those long inserts are the same size, but this one doesn't have a long insert, because this is the fourth model of the Barcroft, which has the obviously a bit taller stature, stature than a regular Zippo, but it uses a regular Zippo insert. That was made starting in uh, 1953, and it ended about 1979. So these have been out of production since 1979. This one was made about in the uh, late 50s. As you can see on here, it has the uh, the logo from a shoe company, in which it says, if we can focus here, let me put my bookmark in so I don't lose my spot in my book, how unprofessional of me. Let's take a look here. It says... So, what does that say? I can't read it through the viewfinder. So unmistakably, I don't know if that's a weird way to spell Johnson or Johansson, uh, but that's what it says. It was a shoe company. And look at this nice little exclamation point here. Seriously. That kind of reminds me of the exclamation point you see above uh, one of the guards' head when you've alerted them in Metal Gear Solid. On the back, you see some uh, signature's name. I, I guess this was given to a salesperson who worked for this shoe company. So I think, if I can read that, I think that says Mona Momaz. So Mona Momaz, if you are watching this, I, uh, I thank you for your service that led to you getting this letter, which you then sold to somebody on eBay. Now, uh, this is not the only line of, of uh, table lighters that Zippo has made. In fact, throughout the years, they've made others besides the Barcroft. They've made things like the Lady Barbara, which is a more rounded version, a more elegant version. Hence the name Lady, because, you know, ladies are typically a bit more elegant. 
And they made other things such as the Corinthian and the Handy Lights, which were basically a Zippo, just like your standard Zippo, but you would put it on this stand, a little pedestal stand, so it would be a cheap way to uh, make a table lighter. Myself, I wanted one that was actually designed by Zippo as a table lighter. And yes, this Barcroft design was designed by George D. Blaisdell himself. Uh, when he made the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I saw the patent for it. So this was patented by George G. Blaisdell. Now, if we take a look in this book, it's going to show you some of the other Barcroft lighters that have been throughout history. Here is the first one I have here, and uh, that I don't have, but here's the first one in the book of the uh, second model. As you can see, it's, it's a bit taller than this one in the background there. And that says uh, the Wileys on it. Here is the third model, as you can see it's shorter, but this one has a full length insert. And over here we have the fourth model, which is the one I have, which is tall, but it uses a standard Zippo insert. And then you can look at some of the other ones. Mickey Mouse ones, these are all fourth generations. Cool uh, tobacco, a phone company there. Uh, a few more fourth generations. And here are some of the fancier ones. This is a Lady Bradford. They also made a lazy Lady Barbara. Here's a rose art. And here are some of the, here's some more rose arts. And I gave Moderne, Modern, a fancy way, to spell, fancy way to spell Modern. There is a Corinthian. And here are those handy lights that I mentioned, which are basically like sticking a Zippo on an, a, actually it looks like a Hershey's Kiss. That's interesting. And here's some more of them. So you can see, just flipping through this book, give you an idea of their table lighters. There's the uh, Lady Barbara that I mentioned, a bit smaller, and that's it. But there's your, uh, there is your brief history lesson on the Barcroft lighters. I think they're very interesting because they represent a time that we don't have anymore where, hell, if you put a table lighter out in a restaurant now, you would single-handedly be contributing to the deaths of millions of children. Speaking of that, let me tell you a little side story here. I actually saw, this is no joke, I actually saw a review on Amazon of the Zippo Street Chrome Lighter, which is their cheapest one they sell on Amazon for about $8, where some dumb... <clears throat> lady thought it would be a brilliant idea to say, why don't we just call this later what it is? Come on, I mean, let's just go ahead and call this later what it is, right? And I'm thinking, okay, what are we going to say? Um, a piece of history, uh, a faithful companion for wartime heroes, uh, a symbol of American engineering and Americans standing behind their product, a symbol of American uh, entrepreneurship with George G. Blaisdell making the Zippo factory and the legend, uh, a symbolism of marketing and branding the Zippo brand, how it was marketing. What's it going to be? What is? What are we really supposed to call this lady? And this dumb <clears throat> lady says... A cancer helper. God, if that is not the epitome of not taking personal responsibility for anything nowadays. And that review probably still is on Amazon. Go ahead and check the street chrome lighters there because I ripped her a new one after that. Uh, well, I didn't really rip her a new one. I just used a little bit of common sense. That usually scares off these idiots. <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't show you that we've lost all personal responsibility in this country, I don't know what will. Yes, it's the cancer helper. When you buy a Zippo you will have cancer. Just like when you buy a gun, you'll start murdering people. I know, I know. That's just me. I own a lot of lighters and I own a lot of guns, so I'm the biggest mass murderer that the state won't even have to execute because I have cancer. Now, let's take a look at the lighter here. As you can see, it's been this way the whole time. I did have to do a little TLC to it, though. It didn't come with a box. I knew that it wasn't going to come with a box. First of all, the price I got for on eBay was $42. The price that somebody had bid up to was $40, and then I sniped them at the end for $42. And it didn't come with a box. They said there was no flint... And they said that the hinge was good. And that's pretty much right. That's pretty much right on. This is, in fact, in excellent condition. There's no dings, no marks, not even any rust on it. I'm, well, I'm not sure that brass can rust, but you, you get the idea. There's, there's no uh, patina on there. The felt on the bottom is still good. Felt so it doesn't slide around on like a hardwood table. When you open it up here, you still get the nice click. Of course, you're not going to have a regular Zippo click because this lid is much thicker than a Zippo lid. Um, I don't have my calibers, be uh, calibers, calipers because I took them back downstairs to do some reloading stuff. But trust me, it's a thicker lid. I'd say it's probably almost 300% thicker. Uh, the whole thing weighs a lot more too. And if we take the uh, insert out, 
We'll see. Standard Zippo insert. You ever seen one of those before? Uh, they said there was no flint with it, and I got a bit of a, not a scare, but just kind of a sigh because I've seen it happen before. Uh, I got a bit of a sigh when I looked, and um, there was no flint in it, but there was also not the flint pusher, the little uh, follower there, the little brass follower that is attached to the end of the flint spring that some people often can sit, often think that it's the flint when they're looking at it, but it's not. What that means is often that the uh, the, the flint has corroded in there. <laughs> That's never fun. I'd never actually taken one of those corroded flints out before, so you can still send these back to Zippo. They are still completely lifetime warrantied by Zippo to get it all fixed and you'd be right back. But I didn't want to because I wanted this original insert here, which doesn't look like today's inserts. As you can see, there's a bit less information, such as no date on it. I wanted to keep the original insert, but I wanted it in working order. It kind of annoys me when Zippos are not in working order, because I mean, that's their big thing. You will never be without a light. So what I actually did was I took a power drill and I took a 1 16th inch drill bit and I chucked it in there and I drilled right through the old corroded flint and it just powdered in there to a mess of blue powder and I drilled and I reamed it out a little bit to get all that nasty old powder out there, tapped it a few times, the other flint went right in. So that's a little tip for you. I might make a video showing exactly how to do that if I ever get another corroded flint. But I, I took care of that and now it sparks well. Obviously there's no fluid in there because I don't really have a need for fluid to be in there. I don't want to mess up that new wick that came with it because it doesn't look like this thing has ever been lit. The only other problem that there was with this lighter is the hinge was a little sticky as in when you would open it the hinge would get stuck like halfway through the flip open so I just put a drop of rem oil on there Worked it back and forth a few times, and there's your nice Zippo click. But if you actually want to see this thing light up, like I said, these inserts are interchangeable. We'll go over, we'll take a regular Zippo insert, pop it right in. There we go. A little, a little sticky to get in there. Close it, and then say, hey, would you like a light, ma'am? Shake it, not start. Okay, there you go. Now you now you've actually seen light. So let's put the old insert back in, which will probably never get filled. And yeah, a little sticky to get it in there. And there we have it. That I don't know how to date these things though. In fact, I don't think there actually is a dating mechanism for these. There might be because if you look inside this lid here, you will see two marks. One that looks like a symbol that I've never seen before, and then the letter three. <laughs> letter three, the number three. Uh, I, I haven't found anything online about that. those being a date code. There may not have actually been date codes for the Barcroft lighters. I have no idea. If you know how to date Barcroft lighters, I would love to hear it, and I would love to share that with everybody. But otherwise, that's about it for the Barcroft. They're very interesting because, like I said, they represent a time that does not exist anymore, and they're just a part of Zippo history, just like their Niagara Falls lighters, the ones that were made in Niagara Falls, just like um, their replica lighters that, that show how Zippo has changed throughout the years, you know, the 1933 replica or 32 replica, depending on what they call it that day, the 35 replica, the 37 replica, the 41 replica, and of course the modern lighters. It's just a piece of history. So if you can get a Zippo table lighter for a good price, which I think I got this for a fantastic price, because if we look back at those uh, table lighters in this book, all of these Gen 4s have a price of about $100 to $200. Obviously that doesn't say that there, but I looked at these before and the prices range from about $100 to $200. I don't know if that means with the book, it probably does, but just by this self getting this for $42, I really cannot complain. It's a piece of history. It's a Zippo can't complain at all. So go out and get yourself a nice Zippo table lighter. If you are a collector, I think you should have at least one. I don't care if it's a regular one, first, second, third, fourth gen one, Lady Barbara, Lady Bradford, a Rose Art, Corinthian, or a Handy Light, doesn't matter at all. Just, I think you should get that piece of history for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this little Zippo history lesson for possibly a strange Zippo lighter that you did not know about before, and take it easy, and have a great night.